Uh, I was born and raised in St. Louis, Missouri. I'm the second youngest of six kids. I lived in a pretty rough neighborhood growing up. We lived in the inner city and St. Louis is a city that's known to be top in the charts for murders, gang violence and all that stuff. So growing up, we grew up in a pretty rough area and it was easy to just get sucked into all the nonsense and stuff. As a kid, I was super quiet, like so quiet that my older sister usually spoke for me. It was a little bit of a problem, but once I was in about second or third grade, my parents got divorced, which did not help my quiet problem because then we started moving a lot. I moved schools almost every single year. I was always the new kid, always trying to figure out how to make friends, but I was really quiet, so I was never really willing to do that. So growing up was a little tough, I was usually stuck in my imagination and didn't have many friends. I didn't really know how to make those kinds of friends because I moved a lot. My childhood was so awesome, but in fourth grade, my parents went bankrupt and um, that meant that we had to move. And shortly after that, they got divorced. 10 different houses between fourth grade and junior year of high school. We went to six different schools. It was a lot of wildness. And in that, a lot of um, my life was missing. I was missing a lot of friends. I was missing a lot of adult role models and a lot of security and stability in my childhood. I was at one place one week and another place another week in divorce. I was doing Christmas here and Thanksgiving there and everything was wild. We were kind of taught or told that you had two ways to get out, it was either by like selling drugs and joining the gang and getting a lot of money off of that and becoming rich or becoming a professional athlete. So when I was eight or nine years old, I just made the decision just to work as hard as I can with football and basketball so I can become the best athlete so I can change the situation for my mom and my siblings. And when I got to high school, I got really good. I played varsity, started as a freshman, played football and basketball and just being a star athlete in a big school with about 3,000 kids, it, it just made me really, really get in my head and thought, think that I was something that I absolutely wasn't. I thought that I was too cool for school. I thought it was cool to play girls and party and do all this stuff. I thought that I had to follow this image that the world told me, society told me, that my even my classmates told me I had to, which led to me making some terrible decisions. Like, I mean, I've went to parties, I've got drunk and did things like that when I shouldn't have done those things, so. I really looked up to my older sister because she was this amazing social butterfly that always had groups of friends all around her. She was always in the most popular group, especially when we got to high school. She was involved in a lot of sports and extra activities and stuff, so when I got to high school, I saw that I didn't have many friends and I was like, you know, I should be like her. And then. I'll get more friends. So I decided that I was gonna try to be as much like my older sister as I could. When I was a freshman in high school, my dad attempted suicide. As a result of that, I made silly decisions. I, I drank, I, I smoked, I had bad company, I was partying. So much of what being wild is about is not caring about the consequences, and I didn't care at all. Throughout Throughout all the nonsense that I was doing with the partying and the drinking and stuff, uh, I actually broke my foot my junior year of high school. Then I gained a lot of weight, got depressed. My senior year, I broke my foot again. And, you know, little did I know that I was going to lose the game of basketball that I loved so much. I even had a, I was planning on going to college for football, had a college coach tell me that they couldn't give me the scholarship because I've gained weight and all this stuff. So I just got in a really depressed state that kind of made those decisions of me drinking and partying and stuff just become more normal for me. So because I wanted to be like my sister, I didn't go about it in the best ways. I just thought I'll do what the popular kids do, but it didn't take long to start getting invited to those places I knew I shouldn't have been going and doing things I knew I shouldn't have been doing, just not making the best choices. But I thought, this is how you get popular. The whole time I was going to youth group and hearing what they would talk about and I was just realizing like, hey, they're telling me my lifestyle choices probably aren't the best for my life in the long run. So I decided to stop going and I went less and less until I just never went again. And that's when my choices really weren't the best. 
It didn't matter what happened to me, I just wanted to be wild, so I made decisions that were harmful to me and dishonoring to God. After my freshman year of uh, college basketball, I thought that I'd never play again and just went home for the summer for the school year, sat out of school year and just had to focus on my mental health and stuff. And during this time, I thought that I was alone, that I didn't have anyone in my corner and little did I know that God was just preparing me for something bigger and later that year I actually got a call from a school in California that wanted to fly me out and give me a tryout because they heard that I wasn't playing flew out there and tried out and then I talked to the coach after and he told me he was like look man we want to pay for everything we want you to come play for us and that was just just God showing me his grace and showing me that he's been here this whole time, that he had a bigger plan for me that I couldn't see because I wanted things to move at my pace. Toward the end of my sophomore year, I was partying all the time, just being super reckless, not putting myself in good situations. And I went to a school dance and made a bad decision and just really put myself in a dangerous situation. So. I finally gave in and I called my mom because I knew it wasn't something that I could do by myself or my friends could help me with. And so I got in a lot of trouble, got grounded for months. At the time, I was not happy about it. I was mad that I couldn't go do those things anymore, that I couldn't hang out with those friends, but none of those friends talked to me again. They just acted like I wasn't there, like I didn't have memories with them, like we didn't have a relationship. And that's when I realized, wow, this lifestyle isn't good for my future. It's not actually benefiting me and those people aren't gonna make my life better. They're not real friends and it's just made me realize that's not where I want to be at and that's not where I want to see my life go. Being wild, I saw that this lifestyle was actually restricting me. I was losing motivation. I was losing energy. I grew insecurities that I had never had before and ironically my choices were holding me back. The summer after my sophomore year of high school, I went to a summer camp at Grace Students, and I have always had issues with my relationship with my dad, but I realized that my Heavenly Father loves me no matter what, and so I believe that Jesus Christ paid the price for my sins. When I went out to that school, um, I met my wife, Brooklyn. She was at the beach, she was on a family vacation with her family, and. She was playing basketball and I saw her knock down a few shots and I was like, wow, she's, she's really talented and she's, she's good looking too. So I'm like, I gotta get her number. So from there, we just kind of kept talking, kept pursuing a relationship. And then little did I know that the woman that I met at the beach that day would be my wife one day and the mother of my son. I started going back to youth group, but really only because I was bored. I didn't have anything else to do. I didn't have any friends, like I said. So it wasn't until my last summer camp in my senior year that I really got a glimpse of what real friendship was. After I graduated high school, I decided to take a gap year to do a missionary training program. And that is where God showed me in my own life that I could have friends because I made some really amazing relationships and I am still friends with a lot of those people to this day. Through that time and in making those friends, God showed me that I didn't have to put on a fake face for people to actually like me, that they could actually just like me for who he created me to be. When I was saved by Jesus and what he did for us, amazing things started to happen in my life. My relationship with my wife, my small group was thriving. I got this job here at Grace, but more importantly, uh, God changed in here. He changed my heart and he made it so that all I wanted to do with my life was serve him. Um, I didn't care about the consequences. I didn't care what it would take out of me. I just wanted to serve him with my life and I saw how wild God really is. When I met my wife, Brooklyn, it was, it was honestly one of the best years of my life. Not only just in terms of meeting an incredible woman, but just as far as sports, I finished my career averaging 20 and nine. So I had a really good season. I mean, just started to really commit myself to the Lord by praying and just really understanding that things happen on his time and not when I want them to happen because in the past I wanted everything to happen right away and just as I start to understand the concept of patience then I start to really get the fruit of the blessings from the Lord I mean even with my wife Brooklyn meeting her like like it's been so amazing to me because I got a wife I got a best friend and I also got an accountability partner that when I'm not using my spiritual gifts the right way, she's here to slap me upside my head as well. 
Little did I know that God would take me to way more exciting places with getting to work here. And getting to work here means I get to do crazier things than I ever thought I would. Things that I never expected this job would entail and it is so exciting and amazing. The Bible says God is an all-consuming fire. An all-consuming fire is unstoppable, unpredictable, and unescapable. When we see God that way, when we follow Him with our lives, we see how quickly He can move every mountain and part every sea. How He drives out nations and resurrects Lazarus. When we follow God and allow Him to use our wild nature for His wild purpose, incredible things happen.